Today we're making beef stroganoff. It's one of my favorite dishes of all time. It's absolutely delicious. We're gonna try to make it as traditional as possible. We're gonna be using a strip steak, but you can also use a ribeye or whatever you have laying around. We're gonna make a nice creamy mustard sauce, and then we're gonna serve it over egg noodles, but you can serve it over mashed potatoes or rice or really anything you want. So without further ado, let's get to cooking. Now, when I think of beef stroganoff, a lot of times you see that dehydrated stuff that you get in the grocery store, but it's actually very easy to make and it's gonna be 10 times better than anything you could buy. Now, let's start by talking about the steak. Whatever steak you choose to use, take the steak and place it into the freezer. You want it to freeze just enough so that it's easier to slice nice and thin. Today, we're using a strip steak, but you can use a ribeye or whatever you have laying around. Then after about 20 minutes in the freezer, the steak should be frozen about 50% and you're gonna wanna slice it nice and thin, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch in thin. Thickness. Then season the steak generously with salt and pepper and give that a toss. Then let the steak come up to room temperature and set aside. Now we're going to move on to making the delicious creamy mustard sauce for the beef stroganoff. In a large pan on medium high heat, we're going to add a little bit of a neutral oil such as avocado oil. And once the oil is hot, we're going to add the steak in a thin layer. Do not overcrowd the pan. And because the steak is so thin, you want the pan to be very hot and you're going to let it sear for around one to two minutes so it develops that nice caramelization on one side. Then continue to cook the steak for around 30 seconds. It'll still be rare to medium rare. Remove it from the pan and repeat the process with the rest of your steak. And don't worry, we're gonna cook it the rest of the way in the sauce. Now reduce the heat of the pan to medium and add a half a stick of butter. Once the butter is nice and melted, we're gonna go in with three fourths cup of onion that we peeled and diced up nice and fine. And then we're gonna season with a little bit of salt and black pepper. Give that all a stir until combined. And you're gonna wanna let the onions caramelize nice and slowly. Give them a stir every few minutes. This process might take around 15 to 20 minutes. So just be be patient. It's going to add a lot of flavor, so make sure you caramelize the onions properly. Now we're going to go in with some shiitake mushrooms that we sliced up nice and thin. If you don't have shiitake, you can use like a button mushroom or even a baby bella mushroom. I just prefer the flavor of shiitake and the nice umami that they give. Now just like the onions, you want to give the mushrooms enough time to release all their water before adding some garlic that we peeled and minced up nice and fine, along with two sprigs of some fresh thyme. Give that a stir and let saute for around 30 seconds or until the garlic and thyme is nice and fragrant. Then we're going to go in with one cup of a dry white wine, such as a Chardonnay. Bring to a simmer for around five minutes and let the wine completely reduce. Then we're going to go in with one cup of beef stock. Now, just like the wine, we're going to let the beef stock reduce, but this time we're only going to reduce by half its volume. Once the beef stock is reduced, we're going to add one tablespoon of Dijon mustard and one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. Give that a stir until the mustard is completely dissolved into the sauce. Then we're going to go in with a half a cup of sour cream and a half a cup of heavy whipping cream, which is going to add some nice richness and help thicken up the sauce. Give that a stir until the sour cream is completely incorporated into the sauce and then we're going to bring this to a very gentle simmer. Now while our sauce continues to reduce, let's talk about the noodles. Now traditionally it's most common to use the curly egg noodles, but I found these flat egg noodles that we're going to use today. So we're going to bring some water to a boil and season with salt and then we're going to cook the egg noodles to the instructions on the package. Then we're going to drain and set aside. So now that our sauce has been simmering and it's nice and thick, we're going to give it a taste and adjust the seasoning to to our liking before adding the steak back. Now give that a mix until the sauce is evenly coating every single piece of steak. And once the steak is heated through and cooked to your desired doneness, we're just gonna finish with a little bit of parsley that we chopped up nice and fine. Then we're gonna give it one final mix. And now it's time to serve it up. We're gonna add some of the cooked egg noodles to the bottom of the plate, a generous amount of our beef stroganoff, some of the gravy, and then a little bit of parsley for garnish. I really hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And now it's time for the taste test. I'm excited to try this. Let's see how we did. What's there not to like? I mean, come on. This is incredible. I've made this a few times now. This might be the best I've ever made it. Now, there, there's something to be said by taking your time and caramelizing the onions properly. You wanna make sure you take your time, nice and slow, make sure they're caramelized. And then when you add the mushrooms, make sure they're all the way sweat down. There's no more water left in them. It's gonna give you a ton of flavor. Just don't rush it. Take your time with it. This has got a subtle mustard flavor, not too overpowering. It is rich, but in a good way. It's not overly rich. The steak is tender. Now, I use strip steak, and as long as you cut it real thin, it'll be tender. If you cut it a little thicker, it might be a little tough. So if your knife skills aren't that good, maybe use like a filet mignon or maybe use a ribeye. Highly recommend you throw your steak in the freezer for a little bit just to get it hard enough where you can slice it nice and thin because it's gonna make a world of difference in the tenderness of your beef. So another thing, you wanna make sure you reduce the wine completely and reduce the sauce. If you don't reduce it, you can always add a little bit of cornstarch and it'll thicken it up. I didn't have to use cornstarch for this, but sometimes you might, or if you're feeding a larger crowd, like a family of six or eight, and you wanna make a bunch of sauce, when you go to make it, it 
it does help to add a little bit of cornstarch so that way you can have the volume of sauce and it can still be the right consistency. When you're making it just for yourself or you and your spouse or something, you can get away with reducing the sauce just enough to get it thick enough to grip the noodles and the steak. Anyways, if you guys end up trying this, leave me a comment, let me know how you liked it. And if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, give me a like, subscribe, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.